Good morning. Welcome to the Backyard Professor videos. I'm Kerry Schertz, the Backyard Professor. You're witnessing yet another beautiful sunrise here in Idaho. It's Memorial Day 2008. I'm going to try to uh, zip up and get a few videos made on the DNA aspect of DNA in the Book of Mormon this morning, today. It's raining right now where I'm going, so I hope it calms down. But in the meantime, what a beautiful way to uh, start the video with a sunrise. This DNA science is a wonderful science. Um, whenever critics began making really wild claims about what science proves and disproves about the Book of Mormon, I usually end up looking at the science a little closer, um, always with better, better information for me personally, because I discover the real power of the science as well as the limitations. Each branch of science has its limitations and if you don't operate within the parameters of those limitations wild and exaggerated claims can be made and they are certainly being made with DNA in the Book of Mormon. And I believe it's very important to understand that we are far too early just yet to make any final pronouncements and I don't care what scientist it is making the pronouncements if they're not understanding the limitations of DNA and these scientists that I'm using certainly are this is not to disparage the science of DNA technology not at all it's a phenomenal technology but it is to keep it within a balanced limited and rational discourse the, uh, the critics seem to have a hard time staying rational when it comes to the Book of Mormon because they appear, at least to me, to be so determined to prove it false no matter what. And uh, it mars their studies and conclusions. So I suppose my videos can be seen as sort of a uh, counterbalance to their wildly exaggerated claims. There's... As I will show, sincerely, it is physically impossible for DNA to prove the Book of Mormon false. Not because it's a bad science, it's a great science. But it is the nature of reality as we have it right now, based upon what has occurred in history and what DNA science can and can't do. I'm up here underneath the diamond. It is really a cold memorial day up here. You see all those clouds hugging those mountains. Those are some beautiful mountains. Wouldn't want to be up in them though. It's cold here in Idaho. It gets about 65 below in the winter. You don't want to be moving here. It lasts for about 16 months of the year. It sucks to live here, believe me. <laughs> I've, I've been told I need to quit doing videos of Idaho. I'm going to make everyone move here. So see, I want you to see that. Up in those mountains, it is about 65 below, and that comes right down into town. Miserable perfectly horrible place to be. I hate it. So don't bother coming here. You're certainly welcome to watch my videos, however. 
It's beautiful from the inside of this truck, but the wind is blowing from the north at about 55 mile an hour gusts. It's an absolutely horrible day as far as that goes, but it's sure beautiful up in those mountains. This is my backyard. Okay, I'm up here by Lone Pine, up here in the Birch Creek Basin area. I'm just below Bell Mountain, and I wanted to uh, I wanted to show you the beautiful mountains around here. These are the hills, and then of course I have to show you the Lone Pine Cafe, of course. There it is, Lone Pine, Idaho. Lone Pine Store and Cafe, population six. I'm truly serious. It's a family that's owned this thing for decades. And this is their business. Today's their first day of opening, so... I know, I know, I'm supposed to be talking to you about DNA in the Book of Mormon, but, uh... I can't pass this opportunity up. Look at these mountains and clouds. This is just too beautiful not to... Too beautiful not to show. Look how that cloud is just coming right down on that mountain. It's not every day you get to see scenes like this, folks. Like I said, Idaho's beautiful, but it's about 78 below right now, so you don't want to show up here. It's completely desolate and uninhabited. There's not even enough. Uh, there's not even enough enough vegetation to support rabbits. So look at that. Every one of those mountain peaks. Look at this. Every one of those mountain peaks, the cloud is coming down onto. <laughs> That's fascinating, isn't it? I can go all the way over here. Oh, it's quite a beautiful Memorial Day today. Memorial Day 2008. That is something else. My wife thinks I should go ahead and give a talk on the... Uh, maybe I should do a lecture. Let me show you the mountains back over here. We've been driving up that valley. This is the road to uh, Salmon. We're on the road to Salmon, Idaho, the river of no return, a world famous river of no return. This particular mountain range here that I'm filming right now is the, uh, the, uh, the Birch Creek. The diamond's over here, but it's up in the clouds. You can't see it. I wanted to drive around to the bell and show you the bell. It looks like a great big gong bell. It's way over to the, it's up there to the north, another 20 miles. I'm going to drive up there, but I don't know if I'll, I don't know if we'll get anything seen or not. And I have no idea how lousy the wind is. I'm going to show you some of these mountains for a few minutes, just bear with me. And then maybe I can, here, zip over here again. Isn't that a beautiful sign? Look at the back of that sign. Have you ever seen anything so beautiful in your life? Okay, that's enough sarcasm. Time to get to the beautiful stuff. There we go. Look at those mountains way back there in those clouds. These are pretty tall mountains. Pretty nice mountains. Cold, very, very cold. Don't move to Idaho. It'd be the worst mistake you ever made. I'm a native. I'm used to this kind of stuff. You people who move here normally, you freeze your butts off, man. That is so interesting how that cloud, both clouds, Come right down onto those mountains. I'll get talking about DNA here in a minute. These mountains I scout camped in years ago. We're on the Nez Perce Trail. This is the uh, this is the region of the country where Chief Joseph and his tribes got uh, caught 50 miles from Canada. They're trying to get away. But this is the land. I know. I know. I'll, uh, I'll stop so I can be steady so that you can see this because it's probably making you seasick. But it's too bad. We're right in, we're right, the Bell Mountain's right in front of us right there, but it's up in the snow. Uh, I'll see if I can, you never know, within an hour or two it could clear out. I don't know, it looks like the sky's trying to break up. But uh, we're going to come to the charcoal kilns, and I told you I'll do DNA, and I'm going to. I know I'm uh, already three or four videos into this, and I haven't said a thing yet that's worthwhile listening to. Of course, and I haven't yet since I started my videos, according to some, but <laughs> what do they know? Anyway, woohoo! I'm having fun, man. 
All right, when I get to the video, videos, when I get to the charcoal kilns, I'll start videoing. They're a historic site. That'll be kind of fun to do some videos in them. All right, over and out, Roger Wilco. This is the Backyard Professor saying, beam me up, Scotty. There is no intelligent life down here.